Hey, this is All Things Considered, coming to you with another installment. Today I'm speaking on the Second Amendment again. Um, there's the Second Amendment as it was written. And there's a Second Amendment the way a lot of gun lovers want it to be. Uh, written. Um, this article, it says, let's call the liberals Second Amendment militia buff, bluff. Let's call the second, uh, it says, let's call the liberals Second Amendment militia bluff. Okay, that means that they're calling that. Now, this is the way most people that love guns want to own guns and collect guns and destroy terroristic watermelons want you to think. They want you to believe that the Second Amendment is a part one and a part two or a part A and a part B and that part A doesn't matter anymore only Part B does. But Part A and Part B went hand in hand back when it was written. Because back when it was written, every man or boy that was old enough to handle a weapon in their town was part of the well-regulated militia and they owned a gun they weren't one of those weekend warriors where you just go for a few days and you play National Guard a well-regulated militia was to be ready at a minute's notice that's why a lot of them were called Minutemen Back in those days, you never knew when something was going to terrorize your town, take over your town, or try to destroy your government. And the federal government, or the United States government, the Founding Fathers, wanted to go so far as to also include our government within the scope of people that could possibly destroy your town. Become too big for their britches, so to speak. So, this is what it says. The Second Amendment reads as follows. A well-regulated militia, comma, being necessary to the security of a free state, comma, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, comma, shall not be infringed. Now, if you understand when it was written, the time period that this was written, if you understand that, then you're going to understand what it means. Most people want to hide behind the Second Amendment. They want to own a gun. They want to fire the gun. They want to go to a shooting range or out in the country and they want to blast off a few rounds. And that's fine. They want to go deer hunting. That's fine. They want to go duck hunting. That's fine too whatever you want to do is fine just don't hide behind the Second Amendment be honest about it I'm a gun I'm a gun lover I'm a gun lover I love guns I collect guns I like to collect guns I hunt I like to hunt that's why I have a gun don't say it's for your protection because the last time I saw a duck 
try to kill somebody was, well, I've never seen a duck try to kill anybody. I've never seen a deer storm anybody at 100 yards. I've never seen a watermelon beat anybody up. I have at times seen a watermelon give somebody heart a heartburn for whatever reason they got heartburn, but um, it says here the Second Amendment is so clear and simple that only liberals aided by half-wit liberal law, school professor Terriots, that is to real lawyering as Jerry Nadler is to Chipotle Chippendales could pretend to be confused about its meaning with a straight face and I understand what they're saying and they're right you would have to be completely stupid to not understand the Second Amendment as it's written you would have to be completely a retarded well you just have to be a retard and I don't mean that against uh, people that are that suffer from retardation. When I say you'd have to be a complete retard, I mean you'd have to be completely incapable of understanding anything that you read. Incapable of any thought process that would allow you to function properly in society. Now I'm not saying handicapped because there's people that are handicapped that can still function. The whole shall not be infringed part is a real problem for the left since collective since collectivist Castro Chandler Chandlers prefer that we Americans be defenseless serfs existing at the government's mercy that we shouldn't that we should be armed at the government's mercy when we should be armed freedom loving citizens with the personal firepower to veto their pinko utopian schemes okay when it says shall not be infringed what does that mean it means that our federal government would not be able to come in legally and tell us oh don't worry about it fellers we got it all under control you can give us your guns now we've got it all under control you don't need them anymore no you do need them as a well-regulated militia you need your firearm to protect your town or your city it's not for personal protection it never was for personal protection it was for group protection a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. It means that the states had well-regulated militias in towns and cities that would band together to protect their state from federal encroachment or from a foreign encroachment that seek to take over their state and destroy their state sovereignhood. Why is this so why is this so hard for people to fucking understand? I don't get it. It's so simple. The founding fathers wrote this in such a way that it should not be misconstrued or misunderstood or misinterpreted at all by anyone. But there's people out there that want to uh, and misinterpret it. And you've got people that sell guns and you've got the NRA and the federal government won't come out and say what it means exactly they won't clarify it because they know if they do they'll piss a lot of people off and you don't want to piss off the NRA and you don't want to piss off the gun the people that sell guns because they make a lot of money off of the sales of guns and off the ammunition of guns but unless you are part of a well-regulated militia you don't have the right to own a gun you don't the second amendment does not guarantee you that right it does not there is no way you can explain it to me that would make me believe that it does part a and part b go hand in hand because when this was written it was written at a time when 
everyone in the township or in the small city was part of a well-regulated militia and they were owning a gun. Yes, they would also use it for hunting. They would also use it for protection, but it wasn't meant for that. It was meant to keep your state free. And when there's strength in numbers and you're all a well-regulated militia going by rules that are set down and everybody follows them and you know what your duty is, you're to protect your state from federal government, from foreign government, from anybody that would that would try to destroy your state. That's what this is for. Now, it says here, so they fixate on the two A's passing reference to the militia, spinning a perf prefactory statement that recognizes that a militia is a good thing into a directive to cancel out the whole citizens having guns part of the Second Amendment. It doesn't say that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It doesn't just say that. If it said that, that would be totally different, but it does not say that. It is all a part A and a part B. It is all, there is no part A and part B. It's all part A. It's all one thing because it's connected by one thing. They want to say that that comma uh, uh, changes everything, but it doesn't. A well-regulated militia, comma, being necessary to the security of a free state, comma, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, comma, shall not be infringed. So if you do it that way, it means that there's one, two, three, four. There's four parts to the Second Amendment then. A well-regulated militia, boom. Being necessary to the security of a free state, boom. The right of the people to keep and bear arms, boom. Shall not be infringed on, boom. Four parts. One ordinal, one amendment separated by commas making it four parts. If you read it the way the gun lovers want it to be read. In other words, to defeat is its very purpose. It's silly interpretation. It's a silly interpretation and one that's not even remotely asserted in good faith. Well, I'll tell you what, you say it's a silly interpretation and one that's not even remotely asserted in good faith. Well, the Founding Fathers thought it was asserted in good faith because they wrote the fucking thing. They didn't think it was silly and they didn't think it should be interpreted. It's the way it was written. They meant it to be taken literal. Now, if they would have known uh, down into the, the future of America's history that uh, 200 years later people were going to fuck things up and they were going to not be able to figure out exactly what happened uh, why things were written and all that jazz they would have probably went and, and, and they would have made a better interpretation they would have probably wrote it like this being necessary to a security of a free state the right of the people to keep and bear arms while in the membership of a well-regulated militia shall not be infringed. That's how they would have wrote it. Let me repeat that. Being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms while in the membership of a well-regulated militia shall not be infringed. That's what it means. That's how it was written at the time. But that's, how it, that's what it means. If you look at it that way, that's how it means. That's what it, what it means. That's how they wrote it. They didn't write it exactly that way, but if you were back in those days, that's how you would have interpreted it. Being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms while in a well-regulated militia, 
shall not be infringed upon. How, how much more clear does it need to be than that? I'm all for people owning guns. Don't get me wrong. You want to own a gun, that's fine. If the United States government says you can own a gun, that's fine. But uh, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, they say it's a right for you to have a gun. But the government has already infringed on that, on your right to have a gun. The government has turned around and made you get a permit to carry a gun. When the Second Amendment, as you put it, the Second Amendment clearly says you don't need to have a permit to carry a gun. It says you automatically have the right to carry a gun. That's your permit, the Second Amendment. Any town that tries to tell you you have to have a permit to conceal and carry, any uh, state that says you have to have a permit to conceal and carry, they're, they're uh, infringing on your right to bear arms. Now, if you want to use that as an excuse to have a gun and carry it, if you want to hide behind the Second Amendment, you need to go full tilt. And you need to uh, call the government on that. And you need to call the local, local government. And you need to sue on grounds that they're uh, infringing on your right. It doesn't say that it's a privilege. It doesn't say the privilege of the people to keep and bear arms. No. It says the right the right it's in the second amendment the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed and when they make you get a special permit to carry a gun when they give you a special permit to carry a gun that means that they're infringing on your right they're taking your right and turning it into a privilege they're saying you are privileged to have a gun because we say you can have one Second Amendment says you don't have to ask permission. Now, let's see what you say about that. Let's see how you stand up for your rights on that one. Uh, anyway, if you uh, uh, have any ideas on this, uh, one way or the other, if you understand what I said and believe what I said, that's fine. Leave a comment down at the bottom and let me know. If you feel that uh, I'm interpreting it wrong and you have proof that I made a mistake you can't just say I made a mistake you have to have proof and show me proof where I'm wrong if you do please post it and I'll respond appropriately to that anyway like and subscribe to this video uh, this has been all things considered because I consider all things have a good day everyone in America and abroad